just showing. every now and then let people know that we're just okay. waiting on the start. Okay, that's good. Are we able to see who's like in the chat or in logged in um, viewer? You'll start to see up in the right hand, left hand corner, uh, the number of folks. Um, you won't necessarily see, you'll see their names come in on occasion as well. I'll keep an eye out for Tony as well. And I'm just sending him a message. Now, hopefully I don't pop out, pop in and out. You're good. I'm just not going to touch anything on my phone just to be safe. I'm just... Hey, John, there's a technical glitch. The blast should have started going out on the, you can see hey. we're up to four, um, should have went out on the uh, 28 minutes after um, and through to 30. So it should start to build pretty heavy. <clears throat> Yeah, so if somebody, let's have a plan for if somebody drops off, like how to keep the conversation going. Am I talking to myself right now? <laughs> I feel like everyone's popping in and out. So someone keep talking to me if someone pops no, out. No, I, I hear you, but I'm hearing everything repeated. I'm hearing things twice. Mm, darn. Linda, do you have also the live going on if you do that's why it's repeating what is just what you, I, sh you shouldn't have both the youtube and your stream yard going and so if you have both if you don't then i don't know what the issue is Just give it a second here. We'll get Linda back in and then we will get started as well. <clears throat> right. What was your name? John. John. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can get Linda back in. I'm on a call here. Okay, Tony, I put you on stage. We're just waiting on Linda. She stepped right back out. and um, But if she doesn't make it in in a minute, I guess we will start without her, if that's okay with you. Well, whatever whatever you guys uh, want. Yeah, there's, she's coming back in. I'm adding her to the stage. Okay. <clears throat> well, hello, gentlemen, and welcome, everybody, to to our Be On Air forum. It's great to be here tonight. And I'm sorry about that little second, a technical glitch must have had something to do with the solar eclipse, something I couldn't control, <laughs> but welcome. This is a exciting day for all of us as we've experienced the moon and the sun. I hope you were in the viewing 
area so you could see the change. It was really exciting today. And if you're with us now, welcome uh, to all of you. You are part of the Be On Air Forum, and we're so very, very happy to have you here. My name is Linda Lejeski, and I'm the National Employer Representative for the Be On Air Network of Media Schools. This initiative is part of Career Services of the Be On Air Network, which includes Ohio Media School, Illinois Media School, Colorado Media School, and Miami Media School. Um, this is supported by Career Services, and we really, our goal is to bring you together so that you can learn and grow in media, and we can connect our students, our alumni, and extended networks with industry pros who have a lot to offer us in these hours that go incredibly fast. So to all of you, if you're watching us in real time, we're happy to have you. There is a chat option. You'll see that to the side of your screen. And if you have any questions, we invite you to put your questions in chat and we'll get them in front of our guests as quickly as we can. We invite you to take notes, but this will be available uh, for you on YouTube after we're done. And so you'll be able to follow up with this. And again, in our third year of presenting the Be On Air forums, we have lots of great episodes in our library and we invite you to, to peek in there and to see who you can learn from and all the great topics that you can learn about. So tonight we are excited to be here with one of our own alumni, that would be Ohio Media School alumni, Cyrus Richardson, who is here to talk about his journey in filmmaking. He's a very successful graduate from our school and has uh, been a part of many projects. He's an award-winning filmmaker, producer, director, and he's really excited to be in front of you to talk about his journey and what it took him, you know, to get from beginning to where he's at right now and really offer you a lot of encouragement and inspiration. And if you listen carefully, a lot of nuggets of information that are going to be very helpful as you continue on your journey. So our moderator tonight is a wonderful Tony Lopez, our own instructor out of Illinois Media School. He's also an alumni. We're so happy to have him here because he's just so great at moving these discussions along and really being sure that everybody's getting the information they need so that they can grow and continue to show their success in the field of their dreams. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Tony and to Cyrus. I'm going to welcome you both, and we're going to start to learn your story, Cyrus, and share some inspiration all around. So welcome, and let's have some fun. Thank you, Linda. Yeah. Linda, you're the best introduced. We need to get you on some show, interesting <laughs> segments of some sort. We got to do that. We got to figure this out. <laughs> Next time. Not gotcha. you. <laughs> gotcha. Thank well, thank you, Linda, um, and welcome in everyone who's uh, in on the webinar today. We want to definitely get... Um, going and uh, introduce our guest today. Uh, um, we love having alumni come back and really give out to, you know, current students, graduates of the program, uh, and just anybody who's trying to get into the field that we're in. And so uh, we do have today Cyrus Sci-Fi Richardson from 12 Stones Productions in the house. He graduated from uh, one of our Ohio media schools. And uh, Cyrus, man, I read a lot about you in, in the introduction and um, in the setup here and a pretty impressive resume. We're going to go through some of the stuff you went through. But first of all, Cyrus, thank you much for being with us today. Thank you. So you're you're a graduate of the program. Uh, first, first thing before we get into you know your career and, and what you've done so far, how, how was your experience at at uh, Ohio Media School? How, how was that for you? Yeah, it was a small class. So the pro to that, you know, I was kind of like this is kind of small class, but I was like, hey, I'm going to get more attention, you know, this way. So you know, our instructor was T.J. Cooley. And, uh, man, me and him just had a great connection and he was so super focused. And so we put in more hours than the normal curriculum. And then, you know, the director, Diane Compson was extremely helpful. In fact, one of my, uh, locations for Hypnopompia, one of my short films was at her house. She was just like, Hey, you can use my house as a location. She kept asking. I was like, are you for real? Cause I will, I will take that offer. Yeah. So we ended up doing that. So those those two names right there really helped me out. Yeah. And, and you know, as alumni, we always talk about like the the hands on part of it. Right. We're, we're here and, you know, we're learning the field in itself. But what we really get out of the program is going and doing 
it out there, right? We're doing it in the classroom, but then we have, we have the internships, we have the opportunities with instructors and so forth. Did you experience that a lot outside the classroom, the, the experience part in regards to hands-on training on the field? Yeah, that was a huge emphasis. So, of course, we were in the classroom making sure we're learning everything properly. And then, you know, TJ was really about, hey, we got to go out and do it now. So I was on his sets, you know, on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, Dead Camper Chronicles is what I was working on with him uh, and some other stuff as well. And then we started doing our own projects together, school projects. So, yeah, like I said, we were really putting in – We I could tell we loved it and I loved it. So we weren't even counting the hours that we were putting in. That's, that's awesome, man. You know, you, you won a lot of awards. One of them I have here is the Ohio uh, film tax credit. Um, if, if I'm reading that correctly, um, can you talk about that and, and what that, what, what that award was? Yeah, that's a tough thing to accomplish. Uh, you know, most States have that tax credit to influence filmmakers to stay in the state and film there. So if you go to California, they say it's extremely hard because all the big major studios are going to get it. So you can probably say the same about New York and Atlanta. So that was kind of part of my strategy here. You know, like, let me stay in Ohio because it's less competitive. And so actually we were rejected. I think they accepted about 20, 20 something. And we were rejected. We didn't. We got the letter that we did not get the tax credit. Then two weeks later, two weeks later, they called and said a film withdrew, which frees up more cash. Nice. And so your film has been accepted. So if you look in the Columbus Dispatch, you'll see like Aimless is the very last one that snuck in. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to give credit to God. I'm going to hear me say that quite a bit, but I got to. Yeah, man. No, it's all that is that's great to hear, man. You know, hard work does pay off. Um, you know, and I'm sure that you did everything you possibly could to get, get that to happen. You know, you're, you're a filmmaker, right? And so in this industry, there's a lot of positions you can, you can, uh, you know, have, right. You can from behind the scenes in front of the camera in regards to the TV side of things. Uh, but really networking is huge. We always talk about that on campus. We, I'm sure you heard it when you were in school, you know, network, 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 network. What was the biggest thing for you? Uh, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase the question. How did you network? What was the best? Uh, what was the best thing that happened for you, and how did you go about it to get that opportunity to get these opportunities? Yeah, I've been networking for many years, and so just probably the last two years, I've learned some really good advice. And I think most of us kind of make the same mistake in networking. We we kind of talk about ourselves, and we're eager to pass out our card or talk about our business and project. I did that for so many years, you know, but you know, you're networking with other people who are just waiting to talk about their business. So no one's kind of really listening to understand. They just can't wait to talk about their projects. So it was maybe less than two years ago. I got some networking advice to just go there and help people. Don't even talk about yourself. Just go there and help people and ask them, what do you need? I started doing this. I started going to networking events and saying, you know, like, what is your business? And then I would always end like, well, how can I help you? And then they would say, well, I'm looking for this kind of resource. So I'm looking for that. And then just become a connector to people. And yeah, after I learned that, I started started being reinforced with other people who are networking because I was looking at other people, you know, like, man, they're good at networking and just learning from them. And when you do that, say you help 10 people, you know, eventually one or two people are going to turn around and say, well, what do you do? And have more of a genuine interest in you because I saw that you were trying to help them. And so then they will connect you. So you'll say, you know, hey, I'm this is my company or this is my film project. And they might say, oh, well, I know someone who has this location or I know. But you just got to come across as like you're looking to help first, help them first, as opposed to, you know, being an eager beaver and just being like, oh, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. You know, it could be slightly off putting. So I learned that recently and it's been working very well. You know, and. And with this comes denial, right? You know, we uh, uh, in this industry, you get denied a lot sometimes, right? For for job opportunities, for just even networking opportunities. Cyrus, what's what's the biggest thing you've done to overcome denial? Because we see it, I see it as an instructor. Students get down, and I'm sure you've been down too from some denials and saying, "Is this should I be doing this?" What have you had to overcome, and how did you do it? Yeah, I'll, I'll give credit to my mom. 
for that. I just how she raised me to just be a go getter. And after you fail, keep going and get back up and keep trying, whether you're applying for scholarships, jobs, you know, it's an extremely competitive world. So I think I just fall back on why I'm doing it. And if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, you know, that's going to discourage you. But if you have a strong enough why you're doing it, which is to make my family proud and to, you know, work on my craft to honor God, because I feel like God gave me a talent. So I want to show appreciation by uh, becoming the best that I can. So once you get that why down, you know, nothing could stop you because you're now you know why you're doing it. So I can get a hundred no's. And we're going to give up on your family. You're going to give up on God. I'm not. So, yeah. so make sure you know what your reasons are, your arterial motives. So to everyone who's in filmmaking, if you're in it for the money, you know, that might be a, not a good enough. Why? Cause you're going to be broke for a long time. And you'd be like, man, this ain't for me. So yeah. you got to love what you're doing. You got to love it. So what I say to people when I mentor them, it's like, would you do this if you did not get paid at all? would you still keep doing this? Mm. And so those are the people who are going to make it at the end of the day, however many years they put in, because whether they got paid or not, they're still going to do it. So of course we all want to make money doing this, right? But you just got to make sure you have the right motivation so that you can get the furthest you can get. Yeah. That's all. That's awesome advice, man. You cannot, yeah, you can't give up. You, if you really do love something for sure, you got to, give it all that you all that you have in order to see if this is what you're supposed to be doing or not. So that's excellent advice. We know you're from Columbus and we we wanted to ask you what keeps you in Columbus? You know, what 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 keeps you out there um in especially being in the industry that you, uh, industry that we're that we're in um out there in Ohio. Yeah, I was actually born in Sacramento, California. Oh. So I moved here when I was like 10 years old and then I ended up graduating college in Florida. So I kind of lived in three major states to okay. compare Ohio to. And let me tell you guys, cause I'm not even from here. It's not even in my blood, the fan base here, the community here is like the strongest sports fan where it's OSU, Cleveland Browns, whatever, like just the way this state is galvanized. And I know California and Texas and Florida's up there too. I never seen no fans like this. I never seen no community like this in all the other states. And so that's where I'm, I just, I love the diversity here. I think um, there was an article that this was, Columbus was one of the top 25 smartest cities in the world, you know, and like Tokyo was on that list and stuff like that. So I, I believed it. Someone fact checked that, but I believed it because there's so much going on here. And that's why a lot of headquarters are coming here and logistics, um, ODW's here, you know, Intel's coming to New Albany. So a lot of people are coming here because Ohio is, you know, someone told me this not too long ago, like the heart of America logistically, because and that's where like the truck drivers can come from Ohio and get to New York, get to Florida, get to Texas. You know, so logistically, this is a hot spot um, for companies to come to. So, yeah, I'm, I'm coming here or staying here just because um, I feel like the talent here hasn't is just untapped. And like I said on the news, uh, you know, a lot of people are moving to other states to feel like they've got to make their dreams come true in Atlanta or LA. And maybe so that's great. Um, but you know, the talent, if you look at my short films, I'm truly working with the best talent here in Ohio. And you can compare, if you can compare that to LA and Atlanta talent, you know, there's it's equal to or better. In my opinion, I ain't got no reason to lie, you know? So I just see it as a place to, uh, you know, it's not so overly crowded. So I me just pretty much being a big fish in a small pond approach. Man, I think you might have sold me, man. That was an that was an amazing pitch to move to Columbus. My goodness. <laughs> Listen, I'm from Chicago, and so we're in sports purgatory right now. It is really bad out here in, in the sports. Uh -huh. But when we are on fire, we can compete with all that you just said. I'm just saying. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's awesome. I mean, you know, you want to surround yourself around that type of environment, you know, community vibe. Um, you know, it's 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 really important, especially for the psyche of industry professionals, because we go through a lot. We go through a lot of things. It's not just, you know, create the content. You know, you got to go through doing the corporate or business, you know, thing. And then you got to be able to execute your plan. So I can totally, you know, relate to you. What do you think about as we talked about Columbus 
the major cities, right? There's a lot of when we were in school and we, and we ta- and the instructors taught us, you know, it was always said, you know, in order for you to work in a big market, you probably got to move to a little city, right? Um, and so I, 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 I had the, you know, the privilege of being able to work in Chicago right when I after I graduated. But a lot of students always wonder, you know, I want to work in a major market, a one, two, three, four, five market. What what advice would you give to them that for those that want to work right away into a big market or Maybe they should be going to a smaller market, in the, uh, depending on what they do. What advice would you give to students like that? Yeah, just whatever approach you have, just have a strategy behind it. Because I was just talking to someone not too long ago, and they're, we were both saying how people move to these big markets and they just get lost. And one of the reasons is because they don't have a network there. So you're imagine just like, oh, I want to make my dreams come true. You move to L.A. and you don't know one person. So that's one heck of a climb. So not to say it can't happen, you know, because maybe there are more opportunities out there. So the pros come with cons. So I would just give the advice of just recognize, you know, what if I were to stay in Tennessee or a smaller state in comparison to going to Atlanta? And then, like I said, weigh the pros and cons. I'm here by myself. So now I have to network even more to find that second and third degree person. And that might take you many years actually, you know, but you're in a ro- a more robust city where there's more opportunity, but that comes with what more competition. So all the pros come with cons. So I would just say, um, you know, you got to follow your heart and uh, just, I think we all got a compass in our, in our hearts that, you know, kind of lead us in a way and even if we fail and, and bump our heads, that was part of the plan as well to get you on the right direction. So um, whether you want to stay in your hometown, like I'm trying to do, where I feel like I've built up enough support and networking over the years. So I got more help here. But, you know, like I said, I know people going to Georgia and L.A. as well. And hey, just follow follow where your heart is telling you. Yeah, it's a, it's always a, it's always a big deal. Um, when it comes to that, and uh, really, it, it's always great to see students from the school being able to work in these large markets if they do when they do make it, um, and knowing the work that they put into it as well. Um, so definitely or absolutely right about everything you just said. We're talking right now, um, here with uh, with Cyrus and, uh, from 12 Super Productions. And uh, by the way, I wanted to mention real quick for anybody who's watching, uh, we are going to have a QA se- uh, session at the last 15 minutes of the hour, so at um, 6.15 Central Time, 7.15 Eastern Time. We will get to those questions as you saw on the text and content there. Make sure you write them in the chat section and we will get back to them because we do want to ask um, our, our people who are watching to definitely inject themselves into the conversation. Um, Cyrus, you're a filmmaker. Film festivals are huge, right, um, in that industry. And getting a, being able to get a film into a festival is a big accomplishment. Uh, how did you get how, how do you get yourself involved in that? You know, what what protocols that entail? Um, and is, is there anything that people should do to really, you know, sell themselves into a festival like that? Yeah, um, I was told about Film Freeway at Ohio Media School, you know, looked into that. And that's pretty much all the festivals around the world, you know, compiled on that one website. And you can categorize everything to categories, to the state, you know, to to uh, the distance that you want to apply to. Um, So once I did that, you know, I kind of realized I started applying to like small stuff because, you know, you know, there's all these bigger name festivals, Canes or whatever, start off small and just, okay, that's sometimes you see festivals like this is our first year or their second year running. Go ahead and get into that because there's less competition to help build your self-esteem. So I started off getting small and going into small festivals. And then when I was selected, that gave me confidence. Like, okay, let me pay a little bit more into this bigger festival. So I'm not trying to waste my money, you know, and get lost in the crowd or anything like that. So I would say, you know, don't be ashamed to start off small. Like I never heard of this competition before. Like, It doesn't matter. Just go ahead and get in there. Sometimes they give you feedback or sometimes you can go network and meet a lot of people. And then, yeah, I've had a few projects uh, that did really good on short ones. And then 
I started applying to, I just applied to my projects to like Academy Award winning type uh, festivals. And I wouldn't have done that if I didn't see that I would, those projects were being selected in these smaller festivals. So that gave me a little bit more confidence to just go ahead and throw my hat in there. Yeah. I mean, you know, festivals, I've seen so many festivals and, uh, and a lot of independent films and the work that they put into it, that you, that you guys put into it is, is the same work that the, 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 you know, these millions and million dollar productions are putting into, you know? Um, and so it's well-deserved when they are submitted and when, when awards are won. And so definitely credit, kudos to you, Cyrus, on, you know, everything you've accomplished. You know, we have to ask you, you know, being in, in the film industry, you know, TikTok, Instagram, all these social media platforms are the are the creme of the creme right now, right? It is, it is everything. Um, how do you feel about people who, uh, who are content creators um, and are really using their skills in the film industry and TV industry um, on those platforms? How do you feel about the platforms itself? Yeah, they're great. And so it's hard to be on every single one of them. So whatever fits you, wherever your target audience is, I would suggest that you find that and get on there. But yeah, and we're, if you look at where the world's coming to, it's really, we're, we're all fighting for attention. Everything is fighting for our attention. So if, if you're getting creative on your social media platform and you've got ways to get people engaged and talking and sharing your material, then, hey, that's, that's great for you. Um, I would I would always say to people like make sure you're working on your craft though, you know, because you want to get better. So you don't want to put so much time in trying to sell yourself. I tell people like be so good that people come to you, you know, and and then you won't have to like push push yourself so much. Like marketing will always be a part of things, but I feel like we put too much importance on marketing and we forget, you know, let's get get better. So it's like. Did LeBron James have to have like sell himself? No, people were knocking on his door because he got so good. You know, if you're a talent, an actress or an actor or a director, just keep getting better. And then people will find you. People will almost smell you. So you don't have to freaking push yourself, push yourself. It gets exhausting. And then it's like self-promotion can be a little uh, annoying as well. So um, I was actually recently just hacked on Facebook, which hurt me a little bit, but it was kind of a blessing in disguise because, you know, I'm not on it so much. So now I'm on LinkedIn a little bit more. And so LinkedIn has helped me so much because it's just more professional, mm. you know? So I'm connecting with people who know someone that knows somebody and can see the degrees and all that stuff. So yeah, people have been connecting with me. So if I was still on Facebook, I'll probably be putting all my time into Facebook. So but because I got hacked and I can't even get to my account, you know, I had to pivot and shift. And so I said, all right, let me go to LinkedIn. And people have been helping me. People say, you know, um, like, I can't help you, but I know someone who can. You know, that's what it comes down to. I got that from an insurance person once. Someone tried to sell me insurance once. And I was like, no, I'm not interested. And then he asked me, well, do you know anyone who is interested? And I was like, yeah, I know three people. I was like, that's pretty good. And I, I took that yeah. from him. So every time someone says no to me, then I'm like, well, do you know someone that would be interested? Yeah. And then you can call them and say, I talked to Jerry here and he said that you'll be interested and you name drop and that, you know, so it's a whole networking game out there. It's that, that's how this is, man. And many industries, that's how it is. But especially in ours, literally most of our people who have gigs are because of what you just said. Um, you know, drop name dropping and just talking about, hey, you know, I know this guy who could do this. Um, so definitely I can relate to that personally. And I know many on this on this webinar can as well. Uh, you did actually got, got me right to my next question, which was LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn is a is, you know, a platform that has grown now. It was really, you know, it was kind of Stone Age, uh, a Stone Age website before you just kind of put your you know, you, what you, where, you work, where you worked and so forth. But really, it's become really a social media platform now. Right. Where not only is it, you know, are, are you uh, putting your job up there and what you've done, but you're able to engage with others. And you're absolutely right. It is a more professional platform. Uh, and my question for you was going to be, how do you use LinkedIn? Um, and you kind of answered it for me. But really, do you agree that LinkedIn now is a blessing in disguise, especially for our industry? Yeah, for sure. And then when I first got on, I'm like, this is boring. You know, like this is <laughs> I don't want to do this at all. You know, I still just did it, put my information up and just never really checked it. 
Um, but it just depends on your attitude towards things is sometimes what determines your results. So how do I use it? I go in that keyword search and I type in film producers mm. and I talk, I type in executive producers and then the whole list, the whole list, uh, comes up and then you just pick and choose and you connect to them. And then most people won't connect because you're like a stranger unless you got mutual friends. But after you connect to them, wait a couple of days and say, Hey, how you doing? Yada, yada, yada. I saw that we had this in common or I saw that you were executive producer for this film and see if you can get them engaged and then, you know, go from there. So it's a lot of missing. I would say out of 10 people that you reach out to maybe one or two will connect with you. And then, yeah, that's why that mutual friend is so important because then you can say, Hey, how do you know Johnny? How do you know Megan? You know, that could be your intro into starting the conversation. So you're not just a complete stranger and then, you know, see how you guys can help each other. Yeah. And you know, it's awesome here. Uh, what my next question for you is kind of the same tangent. What, what kind of marketing uh, groups are you involved in? Are you in any type of group groups of that nature in regards to, to uh, in regards to networking? Uh, yes, I'm in quite a few. Um, there is one in Mansfield that I just signed up for. And then, you know, the thing with Columbus, there's MOFA, Middle Ohio Filmmakers Association. And then there's all these little small groups that come and go. There's always a leader that's a volunteer and they go on a streak of like three months of having, you know, uh, in a row events. And then it like kind of falls off and a new group comes up with a new name. So if you go on Facebook and look at all these little film groups, it's all spread out. There's like five different ones and they just keep on popping up and going down, popping up, going down. So, you know, um, I just try to support all of them really. And whatever, you know, whichever one is still functioning is the one that I'm going to. Absolutely. Cyrus, I'm I'm a new student. I'm day one. I'm in. I want to be a filmmaker, just like you. What's the first thing I should do? Off the bat, I want to be a filmmaker. How do I even get started? What's the first thing you think somebody someone should do? Um, I would say, ask yourself why. Okay, ask yourself why do you want to first off, so you can be honest with yourself, and then go be experimental. Go whether it's with your camera phone or with friends save up for a cheap camera and then go create and it doesn't even have to be a good idea just create create and then reflect on it like man i didn't like that i did like this and then the more material you got you know the more you can evaluate yourself of what your style is and what you're good at and what you need to work on so it's kind of just uh and then you got to oh here's the the advice after you do that share it with people share it with people because you need to toughen up your skin new student you need to toughen up your skin so a lot of people are like oh you don't understand my screenwriting you're wrong and you know that everyone thinks their baby is beautiful and perfect you know so can you accept feedback and criticism because if you can't there's no way you can grow if you just think you know everything and you're where you're supposed to be right now Nope. You got to develop a skin where you can have like a 360 degree, you know, development plan where you could just pass out your artwork to your mom, your friends, uh, your students, just all these different groups around you and, and strangers, give it to strangers because strangers aren't going to have that emotional connection to you to not hurt your feelings. They'll really tell you what you need to hear. So that's what I would tell the new team. Go create multiple things, keep going, have fun and then go get feedback on it. We're talking to Cyrus Sci-Fly Richardson here from 12 Stones Production. Uh, we are want to remind everybody again that we are going to have a QA and a se uh, session in about 15 minutes, so please put your questions in the chat. We're going to get to everybody uh, hopefully here once we're done, and we want to definitely uh, get to that portion because we want you guys to be involved in the conversation as well. Cyrus, what's... I guess the, uh, my, my, I'll, re I'll rephrase the question here. What's the hardest roadblock you've had in your, um, in your career? What's the, what's the thing that really, really halted you and you had to overcome it in such a way that it was, it was, it was hard work, but you, you did it. Um, well, I'll probably can give at least two answers to that. The one 
is probably everyone's roadblock, which is money, financing. So that's kind of an obvious one. But I would say just uh, fighting self-doubt. You know, fighting self-doubt is I'm the only thing stopping me. And so you can go on a streak of good things happening to you and then like a week, just bad things. And just and so, yeah, it does take a, a lot of fuel of optimism to get through this stuff. So it's just me and to all the dreamers out there, you know, it's like, how do you have that certainty that your dream is real? Because I don't want to waste my time. You know, I don't want to put all these hours and years into something when that's really not my destiny and that's not, it's not going to happen for me, or maybe I'm just not that good or I'm better at something else. And I need to go chase that dream instead. So that is the hard part for everyone who's dreaming. Like, how do you know your dream is real so that you can commit a hundred percent? And I was talking to someone not too long ago, you know, we kind of established that people are operating with like this 50% effort in their dream, 50 or 75%. What if you knew for sure your dream was going to happen. You would operate at a hundred percent, right? Every single day. So you got to get to that mindset. You got to have some type of, and for me personally, it's a testimony from God that has helped me to let me know, like, don't give up. This dream is real. Okay. Now I can go a hundred percent. And when you do that, you know, the world reacts to you in a hundred percent. So there's a lot of laws of attraction to this producer stuff. It really is. And so if you're doing something, 50%, you know, you get 50% results from the outcome. So you got to make sure you tackle everything wholeheartedly. And then you will see results just attracting to you. Give me a second, sir. As I'm writing that down. That was absolutely, <laughs> that was absolutely really good. <laughs> um, yeah, man, you, that is, that is awesome to hear. And I, it's, it's the same concept of when, I tell students, hey, you know, you you come into this program and you give 10, 20 percent. You're I mean, and you just you're just here to get a certificate. I mean, you, good for you, but you're not going to reach your goals. And so it's definitely intangible what you're saying. And um, I like that. I really do like that concept. Were you going to say something? I'm sorry. Oh, no. Appreciate oh, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's great advice. I love I like that counsel. And um, it's a great quote, too. So. I hope y'all heard that. I hope everybody on there heard that. Operate at a hundred percent is awesome, awesome um, to hear. You know, uh, I always we always ask this question, Cyrus, on our webinars here. We have to ask you, what would you say to your younger self right now? Ooh, um, and of course, in the world of in in this world of uh, you know radio, TV, media, and so forth. What would you tell yourself? Man, I've always been a hard worker. I really have, but I would probably tell myself to work harder, to work harder. I had no idea that the tunnel was this far and this dark. So I would have done myself a favor by working harder in the past. Like I said, I was a, a very, I've always been a hard worker, but I could have worked hard. I could have had more discipline. I could have been more serious. And I was just kind of like on a pace. The good side of that, I, I didn't burn myself out. But looking back on things, you know, I, I could have been even more disciplined. I could have spent one more hour or read one more book and just tightened up a little bit more so that, you know, it, it would have happened sooner. I kind of see it as, you know, you're cutting down a tree if you're, if you're trying to chase your goals, you're. So if you just do a couple uh, uh, hacks per day, you know, compared to someone who's hacking all day, every day, his tree is going to fall over sooner. Right. So it's just a matter of time. Like you, you and another person have that same thickness in the in the tree trunk that you're trying to ax down. But this person's going to get his tree to fall over because you just put more hours in. It, that's it. It's just a, it's the amount. The only thing that's stopping you from your goal is the amount of steps taken the amount of chops on the tree so sometimes you can don't burn yourself out you know but i understood that like recently that you just got to uh get that focus energy and you know rest if you must but don't you quit is another quote nice nice linda i hope we're marking down all these quotes from my boy cyrus here <laughs> he's dropping gems right now you okay know. i just have to hop on you, you're so inspiring, I have to say. My hand is writing a million miles a minute. 
Okay, let's carry go. on. <laughs> let's go. Perfect. That was perfect. That was perfect. Um, you know, Cyrus, and, and you're a filmmaker, so I got to ask you this um, because I've, I've since COVID, you know, things have been a lot really different, and you know what I'm talking about. You know, from being able to produce the production side of things, funding. I mean, you name it. You know, it has changed the game. Has it changed the game for you since COVID? Um, I think it. Well, probably in ways that I'm not aware of, but what I am aware of, just it halt it haltered other people. And so it kind of made the competitive field a little less because so many people kind of have excuses now or recouping or trying to bounce back. So it's like now's the time to go. You know, a lot of time people say recessions are the like the best opportunities. It is. It weeds people out, it it makes people quit. And so and I feel like that is kind of um, part of the reason why we got the tax credit because there were so many films just recovering from their production and working on projects that got held back that there wasn't so many, there wasn't so many applications. So it's like, okay, time for me to step up. And, you know, so I would say that it's, uh, it's helped me and you gotta, you gotta keep that optimistic perspective like things don't happen to you things happen for you mm -hmm. so nothing's happening to me else you're a victim and it's like oh my god how did this happen i'm here it's not fair and then you're whining and then you're in a dark place like how can i benefit from this you know everything that happens to you ask yourself how can i benefit from this and then you will see all these different doors so nothing um nothing could stop you when you have that mindset that you know things are happening for you, not to you. Cyrus, you're going to have me running to three miles tonight, bro. Stop, bro. This is Let's too go. much. Hey, <laughs> is hey much. I, I'm trying to inspire everybody, especially yeah. Ohio people. Whoever's watching in other states, too. That's cool. But for Ohio, baby, let's there go. go. There you go. There you go. Um, you know, editing programs, you know, Adobe Audition. I'm sorry. Adobe Premiere is the industry standard. Um, and do you do you edit as well uh, as you're as you're doing? Uh, as you're producing these and filmmaking and so forth, how does that work for you? Um, I've slightly learned about it and realized that it's not for me. So oh. I do not. And I just surround myself with the best talent I can find. Awesome. Uh, shout out to Tyler Stanley, who's been working with me for uh, many projects now. And we just, our last project in winter film had 11 nominations and he's up for best editor. So yeah, I've been working with him for a while and, uh, yeah, I let the professionals, I let the pros do it. And then whatever I'm best at, I need to do what I'm best at. Whatever you're best at, you do that. Yeah. Yeah. You got to build a proper team without a doubt. I think in any, in any of the, uh, you know, categories of this industry, you got to have that proper team with you. So I, I can, I can relate to you personally as well uh, as I host a podcast and I, I mean, I edit, but I, I leave it to someone who's better than me <laughs> to, to edit. You know what I mean? So you yeah. need that team with you. Um you know, in the filmmaking, we're going to get to our Q&A session here in just one second. But I got to ask you, man, uh, you know, who is one of your favorite filmmakers? You know, from the Christopher Nolans to the uh, Michael Bays of the world and, and the list goes on and on. If you had to pick somebody to work with or just appreciate their talent um, on the highest level, who would you who would you pick? Oh, man. Good question. Um, you can put those two names in there. Because Christopher Nolan is blowing everyone's minds away. Man. And I I appreciate him because he is pushing our collective consciousness as a society to think in ways. There's like humanity where we're smarter than we think. Someone told me when I was writing, like, write to it. Don't treat your audience like you're dumb when you write. Write to them like they're extremely smart. And I did like that advice. And they'll catch up to it. They will evolve to it. Yes. So yeah, I started doing that. But um, one of my favorite screenwriters man, is Alan Ball. Mm -hmm. He wrote American Beauty. And that was huge inspiration for me. So I would like to get to know him. And um, of course, M. Knight well, I can't even pronounce his last name, but you know, the writer of Sixth Sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was, uh, yeah, he, now he blew my mind as well. It was like, all right, top that, my goodness. Um, yeah, so it, let's throw Spike Lee in there because he just really 
penetrated the industry on the hardest way possible. Just, and that's how I see just making short projects, short projects, and then fundraising the hard way, you know, making a name for yourself within your own community. So I um, feel like I'm taking that, that route that he did. So I appreciate, and then look at the movies that he has um, made from Malcolm X to, you know, I love a lot of his movies. Uh, Crooklyn is another movie of his that I like. Um, I think it, one of his first short projects was she's got to have it or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, so yeah, definitely Spike Lee, but yeah, there's so many names. I can't even name them all that I draw inspiration from. I love it, man. I love it. Last, last uh, fun question here for you. If you, I, I know you probably have a lot of favorite films. If you got, if you had to give me a film, what's your, what's, what's the one you're going to go to? What's your, what's the one you're going to put in your DVD rack or, or Blu-ray okay. disc or, or whatever stream, what you putting up? Okay. I got to, I, I'll name one, but let me name a couple more too. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Scarface is number one, man. I was, mm. I was so late to find out about Scarface. I was in college and I just remember seeing people talking about so much or wearing coats and stuff. I'm like, man, what's the big deal? Man, I watched Scarface that I was like, this is my favorite movie. I've watched it so many times, but I also have to put in there, you know, American Beauty. There's another movie called Imitation of Life which is unbelievably good. The Bad Seed is another one. Uh, those are kind of older. Um, Strangers on a Train is one by Alfred Hitchcock. I was like, man, this is so darn good. And it's like old black and white, you know? So I was always like dismissing it because it was black and white. But no, watch that stuff. It's really good to me. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Dark Knight in your top 10, top five? Anything like that? Oh, man. See, now we got to open up a new door because I got to put the Spider-Man <laughs> in there and the Avengers. But, I, yeah, I definitely love the Dark Knight for sure. But then, you know, then I got to like them all. I got to throw them all in there. Yeah. This is too many of them. I, I get you. I get you. Yeah. Uh, last question for you, Cyrus. Man, you've been great, by the way, man. I really appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Uh, well, last question for you. What are you doing now? What's what's the what's the next step? What you got What you got going on uh, on, on the dock here? What's the next step for you here? Yeah, it's full throttle, 100 percent every day that, you know, I'm raising funds, uh, pretty much having like four meetings a week with potential investors and producers We're crowdfunding. I was on Good Day Columbus not so long ago. Some some donations have been coming in. Um, so that's going with us, helping with us. And uh, yeah, just building my team and we're just having team meetings and we are just you never know what tomorrow brings. Like, I didn't know I would be on this, right? I didn't, I would never imagine I, you guys would invite me on this, but that's the, that's what happens when you keep going. You don't know what tomorrow brings. And so whatever you guys are going through, you know, it's uh, like our lives are like the stock market. You can have like three red days in a row, but then you, you'll have three green days in a row, you know? So just know that the, the good is coming. The good is coming. Keep going. Absolutely, man. Cyrus, man, you're you've been awesome, man. I definitely uh, I'm you and I know we're not done yet, but I'm literally I'm, I'm really inspired by your words and uh, some of the quotes you've given out, man. So uh, you've just been great, bro. You've been great. I'm I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm trying to follow you well. out here, but you, you got me just whoo, you got me going. Good. Hey, everyone follow their dreams. Let's go, baby. There you go, man. Um, so we're going to go here right now. We're going to go to our Q&A uh, session. I'm just trying to look through our chat here to see if you do have any questions here. Um, and I see Chit Chat is here uh, with Max here as well. I, I've yes. got a little question from Holly. Can you see it, Tony? I'm not sure. It's right up on the screen. Oh, right here. There we go. Sorry. I was I actually okay. missed the comments. Yeah, Holly does have a question here. She does ask, do you have a story that comes to mind when filming a movie when the magic happened? Something you didn't expect but made the movie? Yeah, I'll say with the, the 48-hour film project, um, we were – up given 48 hours to make a project project and we were given a prop and characters and my last one it had to be a silent film was the genre which was kind of difficult and we had to put some quotes in there and dialogue and so that was very hard to i wrote that script like one something in the morning and i had to be on set at eight in the morning and i was so when i came there you know with my team you know passed the script out and so we still have missing 
unsolved, you know, things that needed to be put in a script. And so my team, we just started brainstorming and talking. That's why it's so important to me when I build a team that everyone's comfortable receiving feedback and giving, giving it as well so that no one gets offended. And then that's kind of what happened. We had something like, where should that go? Where should that go? Or we should do this. And then it's that aha moment. And it's like a group think of everyone's like, yeah, that's it. That's it. And we all agree. And so you do feel that magic moment. Um, and for Hypnopompy, if anyone checks that out, um, we didn't know where to put the uh, Luke 1017 is a scripture that we uh, inserted in there. We didn't know where to put it. And then we were almost done shooting and we still haven't inserted anywhere. And then we kind of just came up with it and we're like, that's it. And we all just like had that feeling together. Like we knew that that's where it went. We all agreed upon it. So that's one of those examples right there. That's awesome. Uh, we do have another question here from Brian Kaminsky. Brian says, do you use social media to network like LinkedIn, IMDB, uh, DB, or any others? I know we kind of talk, talked about it a bit, but um, I guess expound. Yeah, on I think Twitter, Twitter is kind of like, it's hard to get impressions. So even on LinkedIn, when I post something, it just says like 20 people saw it and I got one like. So if you're not a huge influencer, the algorithms don't push you out, you know? So it's extremely hard to get attention but yeah imdb is something that i'm on which is really not for me i have an assistant actually who uploads it and keeps it up to date but it's probably important to do that because if someone checks you out they want to see your past projects and then they might know somebody that you've worked with so yeah imdb and linkedin are very important to get on very very nice I don't have any other questions here on my chat section unless Linda does have something on her end here. Um, uh, but we'll ask, we'll continue here real quick for one second. Um, and Chit Check says a, a very inspiring words as well. Sarah is also in the building. She's joining us as well from Springfield, Illinois. Um, I do see that Dawn is in the building as well. Dawn is uh, is here. And uh, there is a, if I want to say this name correctly, uh, is it Wale Bridgewater? Has also been um, uh, um, tapping in with us. Huey G as well has tapped in with us here on the chat. Jose Alicea as well has joined us in the chat section here. And May Old School is also in the chat. She has joined in on some, uh, some of the chat as well. So all of you that have been joining in the chat, thank you so much for uh, for joining in. Again, if you have any questions, we've got a couple minutes left here uh, uh, for Cyrus. If you have any questions, please, please pop in here. Um you know, Cyrus, as we, we wrap up here, you know, I, this business is, uh, I always say, is not for everyone, right? You know, some people, some people can't take the hard knocks of what comes with, you know, with all this, right? You, you want to be able to show what your project show, what you've created. Uh, and those those uh, roadblocks that we talked about earlier are can really hit people uh, really hard. Um, one thing you said uh, earlier, you said, right to people as if they are that smart because they'll catch up to it and a lot of the times and I'll, I'll i'll ask you this i just saw godzilla and uh oh wait hold on before i even get my opinion this is the q a session but i do have a comment about that movie and i want to get your uh two cents on it but cindy uh, has a question for us cindy says how much are you trying to rate uh raise i believe it's raise for your new project or is it trying to race for you? I think it may be race, but how much are you raise? Uh, thank you, Cindy Englefield. She's actually made a donation to my project so far. So thank you so much for your support. But our overall budget is $400,000. You know, so we need $200,000 to go. And then we'll raise the, the rest as we are filming and in post-production. Um, so we have raised about $100,000 so far. So I need $100,000 more to put Columbus, Ohio on the map. There you go. There you go. I do have another question for you popped in from Brian Kaminsky. He says, what do you do when the weather doesn't cooperate? That's a good one. Yep. Great question. Always expect rain and wind. Just always expect that. And so I tell this to those who work. I think some people on my production team should be listening. They should know. We are going to use it to our advantage. Instead of being like, oh no, it's raining. 
it's like okay this is a raining scene and we're going to use the water drops as now art direction and now you got puddles to splash in like we are going to use it to our advantage instead of saying oh why is this happening to us it had to rain today like nope turn that into art so the wind because you know the sound is pretty important and it's very hard to get good sound quality when it isn't windy so just prepare for wind and rain and you know cold if it's going to be cold and then use all that to your advantage very good very good we have another question here from derek de leon asks what is your greatest moment of adversity that was your defining moment I'm, i believe i'm not a two-part question but uh yeah what is your greatest moment of adversity and was that your defining moment oh man there's probably a couple the first thing that comes to mind though this was many years ago um there was a website called trigger street and it was by kevin spacey and dana brunetti these producers is not on there any it's not up anymore but screenwriters could um upload their screenplay and get it revised and edited and critiqued by other people so i would you would sign up and then you would review other people's and you get these credit points and then you turn in your credit points to get your screenplay reviewed so i pretty much read like over a hundred screenplays and so i was able to use those credits to get my screenplay reviewed by strangers on trigger street and there was thousands of screenplays on there i'm telling you guys it took me years i was uh i was uh editing and revising revising and resubmit resubmit i did this for years and then i became a top 10. you get this little blue star so i remember exactly where i was at when i just opened up my computer because years ago you know when i first started doing it it was so you got a new review like i would cringe like oh my god they're about to rip me apart which they did um it's like going to a basketball court man you want to go to the toughest basketball court to, you know and, and if they scare you away this ain't for you um so but i did that for years and so to see my project be a top 10 out of like over 2000 because of all the feedback that i got and when you hear the same feedback over and over again you know that was like very inspiring to me I was, that was kind of like all right this is real this dream is real and that was like the motivation that happened years ago though very nice. Um, you know, there was a comment on here. This, uh, I think I might have lost it here, but there is. Oh, there, Jose Ali says, says that's beautiful. Uh, gave me a boost, man. So many times I just wanted to give up, but have to make it work, and I will hope to do uh, all all of that. So that was from Jose as well. Also, Bob Cohen said, "Thanks for a great interview, Cyrus. We are excited to watch your progress." As well. Yeah, Bob Cohen is out of Mansfield. He's one of the networking groups I go to. Um, he's unbelievably supportive to me. So thank you. And that is awesome, man. And you, uh, another question here is from Cindy. Uh, she said, do you have any celebrity, uh, do you have any celebrity influencers? I do not, but this lead actress that we're looking for, we got a lot in place already with locations, props, and most of our, uh, cast is Columbus based as well. And that's how we have to honor that tax credit. Lead actress should be a recognizable name. I would say like B level. It's probably not going to be like this big household name, but hopefully this project catapults her to that. We got some names in mind that if they came to Columbus, it'd probably be a big deal. So hopefully we can secure that. Very nice. Very nice. I think we got through. Yeah, I think we got through. A, oh, wait, hold on. Is there more? Uh, yes, there is another one here. It says, uh, from the official Be On Air Network here, uh, do you ever ask a big name to join your journey? Um, I have in the past, probably not going to share their, their name, but you know, they're hard to reach. Um, if you get IMDB Pro, you can look at the look people up and then see their agents' emails and phone numbers and stuff. I was like, it's that easy? That's crazy. So, yeah, we're deciding on if we should get a casting director to do this or just get the contact information on IMDb Pro, you know, and just reach directly to them. So, um, yeah, definitely have. And, you know, in this industry, people are going to say that's like impossible. Some people have said that's impossible on my team. And I'm like, 
we don't talk like that around here. <laughs> like, I don't even say the word impossible. You never know. Yeah. Um, just to throw out one name, Natalie Portman has been known to uh, be on a lower budget. I think Garden State was one example. Like, if a if a big name really likes your project, they don't care. Like, obviously, they're already paid. They're really looking for a role that challenges them and puts out a certain message that they agree with. So, yeah, you never know. Dream big. Dream big. They say, like, uh, shoot for the moon, and if you miss, you'll land on the stars, you know? So if you if you got some homework or you're studying for a test, try to get an A. To, like, I'm going to get an A+, plus, and then you'll try your best to get an A+, plus, and you might get a B. You might get a B, but you got a B because you tried so hard to get an A. You know, if you would, if you walk around like, oh, I don't care if I get a C, I can get a C and still pass this. You'll end up getting a D, you know? So you got to dream as big as look at other, other people's success in life. You know, there's no limit. There's no limit on how successful you can be and what God has in store for you. Absolutely, man. That's, that's so dope. Uh, the final uh, final question here for uh, on the forum. It says uh, from Cindy again on Good Morning America. It seemed like both anchors could relate to your topic. Maybe there's others. Yeah. So on Good Day Columbus is I was on uh, last week, and yes, they both had sleep paralysis. So I probably should talk about that a little bit. My film project is titled Aimless, and it's about a clinical psychologist who gets a new patient, and she finds out he's struggling from sleep paralysis. And she ends up taking on his characteristics and unraveling and he ends up making her worse. They go on a dark journey together and they end up finding out who is behind the sleep paralysis attacks. So when I was on Good Day America, yes, both hosts had suffered from sleep paralysis, which is a phenomenon. And, you know, that was uh, I was very blessed to have them because when you're explaining sleep process to people and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know, it kind of stops right there and people kind of lose interest. But so the fact that those two anchors like, yes, we've had sleep process and it's extremely terrifying and I've had it too. Yep. That's what my film project is on and sleep process is not really a household term. So that's why I think it's an untapped market and I would like to use my project to bring it to light. Well, that is awesome. And, uh, you know, that that pretty much sums up our Q&A session there. Cyrus, before we, um, you know, dismiss here and so forth, where can people follow you? Your social media, LinkedIn, how, how can they get in contact with you? Yeah, to make it easy, just go to SciFly.com, C-Y-F-L-Y.com. So instead of giving you all these long names, you can donate there and then see our perks, um, get an associate producer credit party with us after the film's done come visit it on set you'll see the different uh donation levels but you can see all my other social media my other film projects as well um i uploaded some talent from ohio that's i feel like is the best that i've been working with so yeah just trying to build a film economy out here cyrus man it's been an honor and pleasure uh really oh wait did we get a question here oh yeah keep them coming i got oh, time let's i got do, time. Let's do one more they, one popped in lindo uh, real quick, it says, what inspires you to create films from all things clean beauty? Um, just, yeah, looking back, I got a psychology degree and I was always like an evaluating people and analyzing people, especially in high school when that started. And then I got into college and I started evaluating myself and having self-examination. Um, and I kind of just look at my childhood and I uh, grew up with the single parent mom who raised two kids and my sister was seven years older than me. So she was kind of, you know, when I'm 11, she's 18. Like she was grown when she was like 13, you know, so she was gone. So I was by myself a lot really. And so my imagination grew pretty, pretty wild. And so that's kind of where I developed this, this craft of wanting to create because I was left with my imagination a lot, whether it's writing or um, having a video camera. And so that's what kind of just inspired me to like, man, I got to get this story out. I got to get that. I feel like it's important. And so what inspires me is just uh, my upbringing. To... Well, Cyrus, once again, man, honor, pleasure hosting this man with you. Uh, again, I, I've learned a lot from you in the past 60 minutes. Um, again, you dropped a lot of gems. And I really hope that our audience was able to capture all of it as well. And I, I, I already know you inspired a whole bunch of people uh, this evening. So. 
Thank you so much for joining us on the forum today, man, and uh, much success to you in the future. Um, don't forget to visit SciFly.com to connect with Cyrus there. And uh, it was an honor and pleasure once again. My name is Tilo. Linda, back to you. Oh, my gosh. You were both fabulous. I, I think everybody that followed this had a great hour, and I know it's going to live on after this hour tonight. Thank you so much. We're so excited to follow your journey and to keep tabs on you. And, you know, there's many ways to reach out to Cyrus and, and see what he's doing and be inspired by him. So we invite you to follow him and to support his movie, his project, and all the great things that he's involved with. And we're going to have you back again. So thank you. Thank you guys so much. You guys both did great. Thank you for the opportunity. Perfect. Have a good night, everybody. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care. Wait, hang on. <laughs> <laughs>